Hello. It is a beautiful sunny day here in the last, uh, last part of February here in Portland, Oregon. And uh, this is my artichoke area here. I'm actually going to plant along this side too so that when you walk down this path, you'll have artichokes on both sides. And so I have a couple of plants left over from last year. You know, I've had really mixed results with artichokes because I've planted artichokes here in Portland and then they just get killed by the weather over winter. Now these uh, stayed out here over the winter. They've stayed through the freeze, they've stayed through the snow and everything that we've had and they're doing fine. These guys, um, I never planted out last year so they were planted in seeds over a year ago and they are the same generation as these smaller ones. They should have gone out here in the field last year and they didn't um, and I just kind of left them in these cups and so here they are and I'm going to go ahead and plant them over over along here um, but you know I bring it up just because I mean the fact that these kind of just survive in these cups like this it's kind of pretty it's fairly hardy <laughs> um, so yeah I don't know if maybe the varieties that I've had just die off on me in the past uh, were just a less hardy variety or what but um, yeah, I grow artichokes. I've been growing artichokes from seed. You, they're the earliest seed that I usually plant the first, like within the first week of January. Um, these are not the artichokes from seed. I'll show you in a bit um, some artichokes that in cell trays from seeds that I'm going to pot up as well while we're talking artichokes today. So I'll show you these. So like, again, these are not from seed this year. These are from seed of January 2020. Um, and we're here in the end of February 2021. Um, Okay, well, let me. I'm gonna plant these out. I'm just gonna use my knife to dig a hole and stick them in the ground. I'm not doing anything special here with that. Some old potatoes here. I never planted them over here. I think they were they've been in the ground since before for probably over five years since before I owned the property. And because I've seen a tomato plant come up there and I've never taken the time to dig it out. Um I'm just gonna throw it over there in the gutter. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in growing that there. Um yeah, I was just thinking about one of the things I like about these kind of knives is that you know, I use it to measure things too. So this is um, almost a foot there. I know my foot's on. Yeah, this is almost a foot. So I know that if I want kind of a foot spacing, I just kind of do a knife length. Um, and I think what I did in these artichokes here was two foot spacing, but I think I actually could have gotten them a little bit closer. So I'm gonna try one foot spacing on this side, see what happens, maybe It'll be a problem in a couple of years, but I'm sure it won't be a problem this year.
These cups I'll just wash out and use again. Um, they're super cheap. Um, I use them again, not just to not to be wasteful, but also it takes time for me to, I just, these are just red plastic cups from Costco, but it takes time to punch a hole in the bottom of each one of these. And so, you know, when they've already, when I've already got them set up, it's better to just reuse them than to throw out and start from scratch. But you know, it, it reminds me of something also kind of an off tangent topic. I find, I don't know if you guys, if you all see the same thing, but I find that whenever you are buying things that are for gardeners or marketed to gardeners, um, it seems like there's a premium, right? Because for the same size actual like nursery container, <laughs> it'll be like, uh, I don't know, three, four times as much uh, to buy it. I mean, the, this, this came in a huge pack, you know, for six bucks of just a ton of, uh, you know, probably, probably over a hundred, maybe 200 of these things. Um, whereas, um, you know, if you wanted to buy a pack of 200 uh, nursery pots that contain the same size, I mean, you, you'd be paying much more. Um, so yeah, I always think about, well, what are some things in uh, other areas of the world that can be used that are basically kind of the same kind of thing as, as a, a nursery or a garden um, product that can be used in the same way but are not, are not quote unquote garden products. And I usually go for those if I can. Um, although you'll see I use a lot of standard garden products too. One advantage of stand, one advantage of a standard garden product is that um, sizing, right? These these don't fit kind of in a 1020 tray neatly the way uh, kind of nice square pots that are sized for it do. But still, the cost savings is pretty amazing. So, all right, I'm gonna go uh, show you what I'm doing with the baby artichokes. Well, I'm excited. I get to uh, actually do some use my uh, new potting bench here. Um, I haven't, I don't have it totally set up. I'm still working on it, but it's set up enough that it's usable out here and it's a beautiful day. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, behind me, I've got my sink system, which is not fully set up yet. The water does work. Um, I do have a drain in here, um, but I'm not ready to show everybody the details of it yet because I'm still working it out. The water pressure out here is dropped and I think it's because during the winter storm, we had to replace a couple of uh, valves. And in replacing valves, I think we maybe broke something underground. And so we need to dig down and fix it maybe, make sure our water pressure is back up and then I can finish this off, make sure it works right. So what I have here today is my um, artichokes. These are the actual baby artichokes that I was talking about. And um, I'm going to be planting them up in these in these pots, um, just because they're getting ready to outgrow these cell trays. Now, in planting them up in these pots, um, this is still probably not the final pot before they are on the field. We can all, but they could be. It could be that by the time they're ready to outgrow this, it's warm enough outside that these babies would be fine um, putting them outside. Um, but I imagine I may actually go up one more pot size before I actually put them outside. Um, and, it, you know, I've thought about this before many times when I'm doing this kind of thing as well. If you know you're going to pot up to a bigger size eventually, why not just do that now? And the reason is the same. You know, this year I chose not to use pricking out. What I mean by that is typically, um, probably not with artichokes, but with other things like maybe onions or so, in order to save space in the growing areas like the like the basement nursery or the greenhouse, I would put, I would just take a flat and I would just plant seeds really close together, um, not in, not even in cell trays, um, because without even without the cell trays, I could put a lot more plants in this 1020 tray. If this 1020 tray would just full of dirt and I just put the seeds in together, I could plant a lot more seeds for germination purposes. And as long as they are uh, able to handle being then plucked out, picked out, or pricked out. Um, which I uh, have done in the past, um, then uh, you can put them into cell trays or into these things or something else later. Um, I actually find tomatoes work really well that way. So this year I kind of thought, well, you know, pricking out takes a lot of time. I don't want to, you know, that, that's extra time into the gardening season to first grow them in the, 
uh, densely and then prick out the germinated seeds into, into something bigger. That's just extra time in the process. I'm going to start things at least in the 1020 tray, at least in the cell, in the cells, uh, was my thought. And all of that idea is true in the sense that it saves time from pricking out and replanting, but uh, it is a space issue, and I'm running up against space issues in the greenhouse nursery, so or in the basement nursery, <laughs> as well as the greenhouse, actually. I need to clean up the greenhouse a little bit so I have more space for the seedlings that are now in there, the ones that are more cold tolerant. So I think I may be back to just biting the bullet and, and planting more densely for germination purposes and then pricking out later just... Uh, so, you know, unless, unless I greatly expand my uh, nursery space, essentially, but I think like all gardeners, it's like you just keep expanding and expanding and it's never enough. And the garden here is big enough, but I could theoretically never have enough space to grow all the seedlings that I could get to put in every, every last corner of this place. So, yeah, those are some of my thoughts on that, but, uh, quit rambling and I'll get into actually potting these up here. Um, so I'm just using, I'm still, uh, I'm still uh, frustrated by or stuck by, I am, I'm not frustrated in the sense that I'm upset or anything, but I'm, I'm uh, stuck with the fact that I still have um, my unloading area for material, for garden materials full of uh, compost for the garden beds that I'm still working on spreading out. And so that means that I haven't been able to get a, a load of, um, a load of uh, potting soil um, and so I'm still just using bags from a big box store, and I'm not uh, I'm not advocating for any particular brand from a big box store. I just you know I just use something that looks like it'll be a reasonably safe and um, a reasonably safe and and uh, mostly sterile growing medium <laughs> is all. Um, I'm not I'm not doing trying to do anything special with that. So I'm not going to advocate here for any particular brand of potting soil from the. Uh, in the garden store. If you can see my bags in the video, you might figure out what I'm, what I happen to be using right now. Um, but if I was doing it exactly the way I want to, I would be buying potting soil in bulk and amending it myself as needed. Um, just didn't have the space. All right. So fill up my. Uh, Twenty trays. What I do is I just squeeze the bottoms to pop out, so it makes it loose there, and then I can pull from the top. They say you're not supposed to pull from the leaves of the stem, here, you know, because you might damage the roots, kind of thing. But I always do it anyway. Um, but when I say I do that, I do it after having loosened what's in there. Like I, this, this is kind of stuck in there now. So if I pull from it, it'll probably work, but it, that is risky. You might pull the top right off the roots and damage your plant that way. That's it. I mean, this could probably use some fertilizer at this point, but th these bo this box store uh, potting soil I'm using comes with some fertilizer in it, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna add anything right now. I'm just gonna let it be. This is one of those cases where I'm not gonna stick a label in here because, well, I've got labels, so I probably will just transfer the labels over. But I know what an artichoke plant is. I know what these are. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to get confused by that later. These These were seedlings by the way. These were seeds were planted in the basement nursery in the beginning first week of January of 2021. We're now at the end of February. 